color I'm going to use will be um, some, I'm going to take a big chunk of the, the um, titanium white because we've got quite a light sky. I don't want it to be too dark. I'm going to take a little bit of the um, cerulean blue, just mixing that on my palette. Um, and let's see what this is like for tone, first of all. Don't know if that's going to be too light or too dark, but we'll give it a go. That might be okay. So let's start to block some of this colour in. And I'm going right. Sorry. Use any thinners at all? Or? Uh, not in that. No, this is just straight on with the paint. You can thin it down if you want. So if you're using acrylics, you will need to thin it a bit, probably. Um, because I've got the luxury here that I can paint into this. So, um, and I can obviously um, meld the colors together. But with acrylics, obviously, you can't really do that so well. So, you may need to just thin this bit down so that you can paint over the top of it. <coughs> so, I've just added a tiny bit of phthalo blue into the um, stone mix. So, my right hand side of the sky is going to be a little bit darker than the left hand. So there we go. So coming across the top of the top of the um, headland, change hands. So I don't know if you can see, but in my reference to the one that I'm looking at, it's actually quite light at the back of the headland um, all the way through here. So I'm just going to lighten it up again. And into that, I'm actually going to put a tiny little bit of lemon yellow. Just a tiny bit, not too much, just to um, lime up the colour a bit. And I'm going to bring that over the top of the headland and work that back towards my darker area. So that I get a little bit of a glow just over the top of the um, distant, I think this was actually sandbanks looking towards um, Old Harry Rocks when I took this. So um, I don't know if you know that area at all, but it's a nice area. Um, now the left left side, so this far left hand side, um, feels to me a little bit warmer. So I'm just gonna clean off my brush. And into my light yellowy, uh, sorry, my light bluey color, not the one with the yellow in it, just the bluey color. I'm going to put the tiniest bit of the Elysrian. Okay, just a tiny bit, not too much. I want it to be really warm. I just want to, I just want to warm it up a little bit. There we go. So just warming up those blues just a touch on this right hand side, uh, sorry, left hand side, I should say. Okay, right, so that's my sky stuff. <laughs> So I'm going to take those colours now. I'm going to go to a, um, uh, a flatter brush. So the sea actually on this left hand side is incredibly light, it's pretty much white. But what I might do is leave this whole light area for the moment as just the gesso and start to bring my darker waters back this way. Okay. So to do that, I'm going to use some of the phthalo blue again. <laughs> And into the phthalo blue, I'm going to put a little bit of um, the viridian and a tiny touch of the red. Okay, just to knock a bit of the um, the blueness out and um, the blueness, the greenness out of it. It's not so green. Let's see what that's like. It might be a bit too too colourful. That it's going to go a bit duller. So let's put a little bit of a little bit more yellow, a bit more green, a bit more white. Okay, so let's try this colour. It's come a teeny bit bluer. So I want it to be. A a bit greener than the sky. That might be too green now, but for the moment it might be okay, just to get it started. So I'm working this into the bottom of the 
um, what is going to become the headland and work that back towards our light spot. I'm going to take it right the way across because over here, remember, we're going to have our nice light spot. So let's take that right out of the picture. Now, because this is, um, we're seeing this beach from a slight angle, the, obviously the, the, the land in the distance is sort of at this angle, but all the waves and the actual angle of the beach is starting to do this, okay? So be careful as you paint this, that you don't paint that and the, and the beach um, at the same uh, level, okay? It needs to have some angle on the beach. Otherwise it won't, it won't read as though it's coming towards us. Um, so there we go. So, and if you're doing this in watercolors, this is just going to be normal washes. Okay, so you'd be putting this in with your bead, mm -hmm. as we've talked about before, um, bringing it down. So let's just bring this a little bit further. So I've actually got some waves sort of through this area. And again, there's some more waves coming at slightly steeper angle down through there. And then it goes a lot silverier. So now I'm going to dip into the ivory black and plenty of white. So a little bit of blue in there just to warm blue it up a touch. Let's see what that's like. It might be a bit too dark, but we'll give it a go to start off with. Might have to lighten it. So this is kind of the um, wet sands before we get to the beach. So coming down through there. And I'll continue that. The other side of my main grouping of the um, grasses. Okay, so that's fine. Let's clean my brush off again. Next thing then will be to um, pop in the headland. So I'm gonna use again the Thalo Blue. And I'm going to put a little bit of black in that to just make it a little bit duller. Some white. Much more black. And then. Darling, you see a sprinkler going to be. And pop that in. There. Yeah. Not too much, then. So there we go. Might be a little bit dark, but we'll, we'll try that. So again, all of these colours at the moment are just guesses. So they might not be exactly right. And we'll come back as another pass or another couple of passes to um, address any sort of bits that are not you know, working or are too dark or too dull. We can actually amplify them. But until we've got enough colour on our painting, there's no point worrying about playing with it too much. So it's a lesson in restraint really. So let's take that up a little bit higher there. Just make sure that when you're laying this down that the you're concentrating on your the drawing as much as you are the just laying the colour down. So I'm putting more cerulean blue into that same mix to bring this where I'm getting right to the, where the rocks are now. This is where I'm going to make it a bit more silhouetted. So I'm going to have to change brush later to do all this detail, but for the moment I'm just going to block in where that comes in. That might be better. Okay. So let's just brush some of this on. So I'm just going to scrub the brush just to get it in a vertical fashion. And just, it's remember what out. Color, just remember what colours you used. 
so the colors we've used there are the phthalo blue, the um, uh, black and lemon yellow and a bit of ochre and some white. Do you get that, Sid? Have I fed my chickens, darling? Okay. Yes, thanks. Okay. So brushing this up. So even though this is still early days, I can kind of give a few of these little wispy, wispy ends, um, just to give it a bit broken. And again, thinking about the drawing, so this is going to be sand kind of through here. This is grass. This will probably need to go a lot, lot lighter. But it's going to have some nice, some nice shadows on that. We'll, we'll really, really play around with the shadows to get that um, interesting. And we've got a nice bit of grass, dark bit of grass coming down there. Making sure that it's at an angle. I don't know if you can see this. So even though the brush is going all over the place, the the general gist of the direction of the the dark piece is going down the slope down the slope this is going up okay to give the feeling that we've got the mosses back here so for that i'm going to use some yellow ochre obviously and some white and into that i'm just going to put some of those grassy colors that i've just been using just to gray it down a little bit i don't want it to be too yellow see what this is like it might be too too strong but it might be okay it might be okay so going around my shadows going to grow up coming up stand you should say so out here it's pretty light near the water so just putting a little bit more white into the into the mix. And then we come along the beach. <clears throat> and I'm going to warm that up a little bit. So I'm going to put a tiny bit of um, crimson in there. Just a little bit of crimson, just to warm it up. So just work that into those grasses a little bit there. Don't want to blend them together too much. Just want to work the color into it a little bit. There we go. And up here we've got some more sand <clears throat> so again a little bit more white up here because it's actually a little bit lighter in this sandy bit of the dune coming down towards these other grasses So I need to change the direction of stroke now. I'm going to put a little bit of, um, tiny bit more red, a little bit of blue, just to purple up the sand a little bit. And change the direction of stroke to give the sense that maybe it's going up the hill or touch. So, coming over and down and then maybe it comes up again into those grasses so direction of stroke with oils and acrylics for that matter is very important because that's how we kind of describe the surfaces and the you know how the land is actually behaving so now i'm going to go quite a bit more purpley just here just at the 
top of that ridge, perhaps a little bit more purple here. And then coming down. A bit more there. <coughs> so there's quite a lot of um like where the wind blows the, the, the dunes around, you get these little craters and dips and holes and start to block some of these directional shadows in. And these almost are telling us how the, the sand dune is kind of interacting with the grass. So, you know, by, by making these strokes come down the hill, was sort of saying that this is now a bank. Okay, because if I were to paint this horizontally like this, it would flatten out this bank and not give us the idea that it's going up like that. Yeah. So it's quite important <laughs> to um, make sure that these, I'm not going to worry too much about all the frongs. I just want to get some of the direction in. And then I can paint into that with the sand. So perhaps a little bit more there. Can have some more coming off of this one. Just remember, they all need to go roughly, not exactly, but roughly in the same direction. So these are going down the hill. Get some more of that purpley color into this, this bank. Some in here. We'll have some at the bottom of this bit. Perhaps a little bit going down the hill there. So that will tie that in there, coming down that side of the grass. And then I'm going to lighten it very slightly now. I don't want it quite as strong. Because we're getting a little bit further away now from, from the foreground. So the, the colors need to lighten up a little bit. So these shadows back here, I want them a little bit lighter than the shadows that I've got, I've got here. So coming down. And I'll need to probably pop some browns and stuff into this later. So this is going to help to describe my my little sand dune gully that's going to be in here. So it comes up, up there. Let's make that all dark. And then some of this on the on the right hand side over here. Now these, I'm gonna make them a little bit redder. So I'm putting a bit more of the crimson in it. So it's still purpley, but it's a bit redder purpley. For some, A for some variation and also to um, harmonize a little bit with some of the yellows that we've got in the painting so far. Can bring this back this way. There we go. So, some of those colors there. And that comes back towards our little um, gully area. So there we go. And then there's a little bit more of this sand coming here. So I'm going to make it a tiny bit yellowier, just so it stands out against the other yellows. Coming back that way. And then it comes down, down the hill. A bit more white down the hill here towards our um, 
gully. Uh, and cooler in places. Again, thinking about the, the lay of the land. So these are going to be a little bit redder. Um, and then maybe we'll have it slightly purplier again. So just modulating between bluey, purples and reddy kind of oranges, just to give some variation. And I'm using white. So when I, so here's the thing, when you add color to these very, very light mixes, it, it sometimes makes the tone of the color get darker. Okay, so what you have to do is just periodically make sure that the tone of colour that you're putting down is not too dark compared to what you were using. So you either have to add a little bit more white back into it or you, um, yeah, some other colour that, that brings the tone back to where you want it. So that I don't, I don't get the feeling of it being flat. I want it I want it to have a sense of curving and going down and up and over. And we'll heighten that a bit more when we bring some more darker tones into this, into these dunes. The purpose of this initial, these initial colors is really just to kill most of the white. Um, so a little bit of, actually I might pop a little bit of black in there to gray it down a teeny bit. <clears throat> Now I want to go a bit browner. Now I don't have any brown out on my palette, so I'm going to make brown with um, some of the crimson, a little bit of the viridian, a little bit of the yellow and ochre. Okay, will give me a brownish tone, but a fairly light brown tone. I don't want it to be too dark. So this is about the tone of the of the shadow. So that's coming down there, it's curving and then going back up the other side of the dune here. And then we've got some little grassy bits sticking out down at the end of the little track. Down in there, we've got a few more darks or brownie bits in our little pathway there. I'm gonna pop a few of those in. So what I wanna give the sense of is this, this bank here tipping down into those grasses. So I'm gonna use the brown along this edge to start to turn the edge down and away. It needs to come a little bit lighter. It needs to be a half tone really. That's probably a little bit too dark. So start to turn that bank over. Coming, and I don't want it as a line, so I'm just gonna break it up a bit, make it a bit more undulated. Okay, and then in our flatter area of the sand we've got again a little bit of undulation because of the footprint so I'm just going to bring that same browny gray type color into my sands here so now I need to do some work on the sea because that's been very neglected so let's leave the foreground for the moment I'm going to clean off my brush I can start to bring my um, or, or the formation or start to form some of this wavy action that's going on towards the beach area. So I'm bringing that through there. Uh, just working that back a little bit into those original original blues. <clears throat> now I need to, I'm going to put a tiny bit of lemon yellow into that now and some more white.
just to vary it up a touch. So this is going to come in as a more lemony kind of colour in the foreground. All the way through there. Take my brush again. So now as we get back in towards the, the horizon, the water needs to get slightly more yellowy. Well, I'm reading as though it's got a little bit more yellow in the light. So I'm cleaning my brush off. I'm dipping into white again. And a tiny bit of the lemon yellow. And I'll be bringing some of this in to the, as we get back towards the, the um, horizon level. Might be a bit too yellow, but I can always bring some other colors into it to knock it down. So right up here near the headland. Bring this all the way through there and I'm just going to carry on dragging the brush so that it then starts to break and I'm taking the pressure off 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 and then it'll just disappear okay so I don't want to be blending that edge I just want the, the, the stroke to do the work so let me show you again what I did there so I take the paint from this area I pull it over the top of those original reds as I'm getting into it, I'm taking the pressure off the brush and then let go. And that's what creates that broken color. <clears throat> right, cleaning my brush again. Gonna dip back into my silvery gray, so which is the black and the white. So this color is about the same tone as that yellow that I've just put on. So they can live together fairly happily. I'm going to break up that yellow a little bit. Go into my bluey greys. Slightly darker tone again. Maybe a tinge bit more salo in that. coming out towards where our wave line will be, which is coming through here. A few waves back over there. Okay. So I'm gonna bring those bluier colors, a bit of black again, a bit of white. kind of got a little bit too far, a little bit too far to the right with these whites. So I'm going to bring some of these darker colors back now over the top. Let's just break into into here to get the feeling of the the waves coming back this way. A little bit higher with that. Uh, 
And then we've actually got a wave coming through here. So I'm just going to press a bit harder to give a slightly darker, darker mark through here. Start to get that wave to develop. Some of my lighter foamy colours. And then at the bottom of the, the bottom of the wave on the flat part. All the way through here. And on the right hand side of this clump. Bluey grey that up a bit. Bring the tone up a teeny bit. Just to lose these last bits of white over here. A little bit too white there. Just going to lose that dark bit there, it's a bit too dark. Okay, and then some very subtle bluey greys now, a bit darker, in the foreground, we've got a, a wave near our big um, bit of grass, there, a few little wavy bits back there. A bit darker. Need a bit more um I feel like I need a little bit more blue in that middle section. Just a few bits. Just so we don't get too much color separation, need to keep the colors working together, harmonizing. Okay, so that'll do that bit for the moment. Now I'm going to go back into the headroom now. Anyone want a few minutes just to catch up? Of the, um, the more distant piece of land. Start to bring some of that in. Higher there. And then it flattens out and then kind of disappears into the, the, the color that's already there. So I'm actually going to lighten my left hand part of the headland here. I feel like this is a bit too dark. I'm adding some white into the thalo blue with a teeny bit of the lemon yellow. Because I want to lighten this down over here.
coming around the back of that. I need to get my rocks in. So we've got a pointy bit there, and I'm using a lot smaller brush now, by the way. Um, and there's actually a little bit that sticks out right on the end. So I'm now going to finesse that with my sky colour. So I'm going to take my original sky colour and shape this up because this shape has got a little bit run away with itself. I'm just going to pull it back a little bit. Right. Kind of comes down. And then this comes down. And you can just about see there's the tiniest of little holes there. And then the sky continues all the way down. Need to make that a bit more cliff like. And then we can lose it into our sea, like so. Or the lemon yellow into those blues. Just to straighten that edge up. <coughs> I might even take some neat white. So this is just neat white on my brush now. Just the height and the um, the light on the sea. So that's fine. So I'm going to take a bit more of the lemon yellow and start to work this wave line a touch more. Might be a bit too lemon, we'll see. The wave is actually quite light through here and away. Very light there. Okay. I'm just going to soften off some of these marks. Use my finger. <coughs> and then drag that. Out a little bit more. It's a little bit too sharp there. So then we've got a nice little wispy. Um, ends to these grasses. So I'm going to bring some of these over the top of the colour we've already got. Maybe a few of those in here. Had a 
bit of warmth back into the picture. Difficult with the camera being in the way, but in mind. I want to give the sense that maybe there's some wind or so we've got some there, we've got some little grasses in here. Bigger grasses on this one. So I want sort of a darkish orangey colour, orangey brown. Better work some of this in here. Some of that in there. I'll have a little bit of this readier colour coming into these grasses. The, um, the left hand side here needs breaking up a touch, so I'm going to go into some ochre, back into my sand colours. I'm going to break up, I'm going to pull some of the sand colour now. So if you see here, if I, when I make a stroke, I can just lift off and that will break into the paint that's already there. So then the tail end of the stroke becomes the, the broken almost prongs of the grass rather than paint every single frong. Let's give the feeling the bank comes up a bit more here. a bit more in there. Break into that shadow a bit more. A bit lighter. Again. grasses a little bit more so I'm just going to use a palette knife and scratch and just break up the grasses a touch more a 
feeling a bit heavy, so I want to just make them a bit lighter. darken up parts of these shadows at the bottom. And this darker colour. A few more darks here and there. Some more cerulean blue. A white and a red. some of these shadows out into the sand, get them to break and give the feeling of the shadows being cast from above. And I'm just going to manipulate this edge of the land where it meets the sky and soften it very slightly on this right hand side. more there. Let's take this lighter colour now, run it just over the top of the headland and get it to disappear into that area. And then I'm going to run this very light whitey colour back up and over. That's a little bit of that just on the headland top. A few little flicks. there. Let's break that up a bit. A bit whiter. very light through here. OK, 
carry that on through those grasses. Then out the other side. Just to link the right hand to the left hand side. Okay, so it's going to need to go a little bit darker, the, the waves. So this needs to come up a bit tonally, just through the center. So not the whole way along, just in that main body of the, the gray that I've already got there. A bit darker, and also darker over here. 